right guys it's tina and i am back and it's time for another haul video which all right all right it's a little bit ironic that i just came off no buy july and i just did like a no buy buy wish list where i was talking trash like it was my little anti haul and here i am with a haul video but that's okay because at the end of the day we love makeup hair and we're we're not gonna be shaming people about loving makeup and we're not gonna do the guilt trip and all that stuff we're just gonna enjoy things in my buy no buy wish list video i did mention a few things that i wanted to pick up and i also mentioned something that i did pick up on my trip so i wanted to share these with you guys share my thoughts like my initial thoughts like these aren't full reviews but you know how i like to do i like to give you guys swatches and i like to share my thoughts so we have a few, quite a few products to share with you. I don't think it's that much, but it is. So who am I lying to? So, all right. The ring comes off. Let's grab our makeup wipes. By the way, have you guys checked these wipes out? I should recommend these for you. This is from Skin Food. It is the Rice Brightening Facial Cleansing Tissue. There are 80 sheets in here. And I think these are $7.99. They're available at Ulta and you can get them on sale. I got mine on sale for buy one, get one 50% off. These are some of the best makeup wipes I've ever used. Not only for removing swatches and stuff, because that's mainly what I use makeup wipes for, but it's also really good for removing makeup on your face. And I don't have sensitive skin, so I can't... I can't really say it's great for sensitive skin, but it removes like waterproof makeup. It removes everything and they stay really moist and you don't, I mean, I store my wipes upside down anyway, but you don't even have to do that because they still stay moist. So I definitely recommend these. So I got these on deck, the rings are off and I want to jump in by starting off with the Sephora palette to take away. I mentioned these in my buy no buy wish list video. I will link it here, check it out in case you're interested. There are some products in there that I mentioned that I'm not picking up and some that I do have here along with some additional things. But these palettes, all right, I'm not gonna spend too long on these because as I said, these are European exclusive, so we're not gonna have them here in the States. But there are eight eyeshadows in here. Four of them are mattes, four are shimmers, and they are so gorgeous here are like quick swatches these are simple neutral palettes so the first one I have here is the intense coffee collection and it just has beautiful simple everyday tones that you can wear for a simple neutral eye and what I like about these is that the mattes are very soft the shimmers aren't like overly metallic like they're really simple palettes for everyday looks so I really like them they also have a little dual ended brush in here that you can use like you know quick on the go but these are so soft and the eyeshadows themselves are really like large size. This one is more of a mauve tone. The other one was more warm toned. So those are really beautiful creamy mattes and the shimmers you would have to use wet because they're not like ultra metallic, like they're not the best shimmers ever, but they're pretty decent. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into the other things that I mentioned and you'll see up close shots. So I did mention these in my June video where I said these were my last palettes that I ordered before the No Buy July. These are from ColourPop. So ColourPop released the Soul and Mar palette, which are a little bit different than their typical palettes. These have nine eyeshadows, I believe, right? Nine? Yeah, nine eyeshadows. So they come in these white plastic palettes with a full mirror, which is awesome. It's a full size mirror and it's a pretty decent mirror. You peel off the little plastic, which I am not going to do, but it's a good little um, mirror to have. It's really compact, really sleek. There, It's white packaging, but it's plastic, so it's a little bit easier to wipe and clean because the Yes Please palette, I know a lot of people talk about that palette, how dirty it is. Mine isn't because I don't... I don't know, like, I don't really get messy when I use my eyeshadows and my products. I don't really get messy at all. So this is the Soul palette, and then this is the Mar palette. So 
The Soul palette is definitely like a warmer tone palette with the oranges and the reds and the bronzes. And then you have the Mar palette. But the Mar palette also has like golden tones in it, but it has teals and a green and a blue. So it's a little bit more ocean theme, but it still has like a ton of neutrals in here. In the Mar palette, there are only three mattes and then the other six are shimmers. In the Soul palette, you have four mattes and then five shimmer shades. I absolutely love this red shade. This like, it's like a bright neon, it's called Motel. It's a neon red orangey tone. And that one it already says is not you intended for use around the eyes. Oh really? Oh really? So the prettiest shade in the palette you're gonna tell me I can't use around my eyes? Um, I like these enough. I think they're pretty decent and they were pretty inexpensive too for ColourPop. You know ColourPop tends to have inexpensive palettes. And then the Mar palette, this teal is a chunkier shimmer, like it has glitter texture to it. I like it though and then this um, gold is really pretty. Now the thing is I feel like some of these shades do cross over in both palettes. So do you really need both palettes? No. If you're just into like the blues I feel like you'd be okay with just the Mar palette. But if you're into more of the warm tone orangey shades like the Soul palette would do. You wouldn't need both because I feel like some of the shades are so similar that why would you need to grab both of them? But I'm really happy with these. As I said too, I don't think I'm going to pick up any more of the ColourPop palettes. I just feel like they've done it. They've done enough. I'm good. Like you can stop now. We, we, we get it. We understand. We understand. Now let me quickly mention these because these are easy to get out of the way. So from the Fenty Beauty line, I did not pick up the palette. Didn't want it. Yeah. It's just really thin. It's unimpressive. It looks like every other thing. I am not interested. I will see what else she comes out with eyeshadow wise, but that, yeah, I, I'm, I'm good on that. Thank you. But I did want to get her eyeshadow primer. A lot of you guys also mentioned in the comments to that video that the eyeshadow primer, which is called the Pro Filter Amplifying Eye Primer. It comes in this little um, tube that looks like her Pro Filter Primer, like the face primer, but this is like the eye primer. It's cute and it has the the Millennial Pink. It's I love her packaging. I think she does a really good job with that. And this contains, it's called Invisipink. It contains eight milliliters. Now you guys said this is a really good primer for oily lids, like it seals in the oil. So I am really excited to try this out. It says it boosts color, extends wear, it's weightless smoothing and crease proof. The texture of this, it's kind of similar to the Urban Decay Primer Potion, but it's it almost feels like it's a little bit more, hmm, more creamy, like it has a little bit more tack to it which is actually a good thing because if it's tacky, then it's gonna definitely grab onto your eyeshadows. I mean, all right, we'll try it out because you guys were, seem to be really impressed with it. You were like, oh, it's really good for oily lids and I have some oily lids, child, let me tell you. Mm, the oil is serious. So excited about that. I also grabbed the eyeliner, which I mentioned. This is called the Fly Liner Longwear Liquid Eyeliner. Now people were saying this has more of a shiny finish than a matte finish which I prefer a matte finish, but I'm like not opposed to like a shiny finish as long as it's not like patent shine. And I don't think this is patent shine at all. I really like the tip of this. I like the style of the pen. Like it's really, it's sexy and it seems really good so far. But for me, I have to see how long this takes to dry out because that to me determines whether or not a liner is really good. It's how long it takes to dry out because it can be really nice, but what if it dries out in like two uses? Then what's the point? I'm running this on the top of my false eyelashes. On the box it says super flex tip, agreed, hyper saturated color, true, fade proof and water resistant. Okay, I like that because it doesn't say waterproof because you pour water on it so if you get it wet, it doesn't run but if you rub your eyes while it's damp it's gonna move so it, it's not waterproof it does come off with water but it's not gonna just run if you apply water to it so I like this so far and it wasn't too too pricey it's still in the $20 range which is a little pricey right I guess it is but I am happy about that I also got another primer this is the Corez pomegranate mattifying primer this guy 
I just read really, you know when you just, all right, here's the thing. I was on the website, the Sephora website, which I don't recommend if you're not trying to buy things because this is what happens. It was 8% cash back on Ebates. Oh, do not shop without Ebates. What are you guys doing? This is not even sponsored or anything, but I, I'm looking out for you guys. Do not shop without Ebates. Like you can get 8% cash back on Sephora online sometimes. So it was 8% cash back. And I was like, I want to try this out because I want a mattifying primer. Like, I've been trying to do these mattifying primers, but also, like, I do matte foundation. So, like, my matte primer plus the matte foundation, sometimes it's a little bit draggy, and I don't love that. And a lot of the comments, the reviews on this was, like, it's not drying, it doesn't tug or anything, but it keeps you matte. So I picked this up. So I'm going to try this out and see how it is. The texture of this is pretty nice. It's like a lotion it doesn't feel like silicone it doesn't feel drying on the skin it just absorbs into the skin it feels pretty lightweight but it keeps you matte so I'm gonna test that out some more and see like how I feel about it you know how I feel another primer that I got because apparently I'm in, in love and obsessed with primers I got the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer and this was the special edition packaging with the shimmery top and like it's really pretty this now, I've heard Puffin's wife talk about this a lot, and I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to buy it because it was so expensive. I'm just like, mm, I'll think about it, but then Tarte has sales all the time, like all the time. Like, they could have a new collection out today, and it would be on sale today. Like, that makes no sense to me. That's another thing, like, we probably need to talk about that. Like, that needs to be one of our chats. Everything is going on sale now, so it's like, why bother buy things full price? Anyway. So this went on sale on Ulta, and um, it was a really good price. I think it was 20 something dollars. So I was like, all right, excuse me, I'm gonna try you because Puffin said to try you. Puffin's wife, that's so cute. Um, so why do I call her Puffin's wife? I just should call her by her name, but it's so easy to remember Puffin's wife. Anyway, it's more like a whipped, moussey texture. It definitely is more of a silicone based primer because it fills your skin. Yeah, it's dimethicone based because the second ingredient is dimethicone. So it definitely is more like a silicone, but it's not like a slippy silicone. It's more of that airy, cloudy feeling. And you like press it into your pores and that's what she uses it for. So that's what I'm going to use it for. People influence me too, guys. So I'm, I influence you guys and I'm a bad influence because I make you buy things. But then other people influence me, so... It's a vicious, vicious cycle, guys. It's just, this is how we maintain the addiction. But excited about this. For oily skin, I'm here for it. Then I picked up the new Hourglass um, Extreme Lash Mascara. This is the Caution Mascara. So Hourglass did like a whole promotion for this. It was like a big deal. And I, I don't know, like I have this thing about mascara too that I will try out all the mascaras. Give me all of them. So I do have the, oh, I didn't even think to mention this one. I did get the Milk Kush Mascara. This is the one with the THC is, what? What does it have in there? Something to do with cannabis. I'm not sure what the ingredient exactly is, but it's not the one that makes you high. Either way, this guy heavy ass packaging too it's the this silver looking packaging and they say it has heart shaped fibers like the brush is exactly the kind of brush I would want it's a fiber brush this mascara I, <laughs> I don't agree that it's awesome maybe that's just me maybe I need to use it some more but it's like the fibers want to get in my eyes and blind me and I am not about that life and I don't feel like it gives me tons of volume compared to my better than sex it's not awful, awful, but like the hype that it got, I was like, really? That? So anyway, I got the hourglass one. So hopefully the hourglass one is better. The wand is like a conical shape. It's like a cone. Still a fiber. I love like the density of the fibers. We will see. I don't know why I'm doing this because I have false mascara. False mascara. It's kind of false mascara. It's false lashes, but whatever. I have, I'm, shut up. I can't. <laughs> okay with myself um let me let me live i mean leave me alone stop it <laughs> another primer that i got let's just move on this is from tarte again i told you they have sales like every five sec like every five seconds and i got this a while back this is the tarte shape tape eye primer and i just found it in my stuff don't 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 judge me 
So this is a stick primer and it has like a lighter beige shade to it but then you blend it out and I'm interested to see how this primer works. I've been trying a lot of primers lately guys like eyeshadow primers and face primers and I'm just excited to see what's going on. And no, I did not boycott Tarte. I don't know, like a lot of people have been boycotting all these brands. Like, I... Do you, whatever makes you happy. Don't try to force that on me. Like, I'm not gonna... I've been buying Tarte. I know their shade range sucks. I don't really promote them that much on my channel. But there are a ton of things that I like from them. And I'm not looking to them for base products, right? So it's not like I expect much from them. With that, I am... Yes, I'm upset and we can voice our concerns and all that. But I'm not going to boycott a brand because of that necessarily. I will like withdraw my patronage a little bit. And then I will talk about it, of course, and I won't promote their products as much. But I'm still going to enjoy the products that I enjoy from them. So anyway, got that. I also picked up the Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This was recently released from Too Faced. Again, not boycotting them because of influencers that have issues with them that made bad contractual choices. I got the concealer in butterscotch. So this is almost like my skin tone. It's great coverage. I do like it. I think, I don't know, like to me it's a little bit similar to the Tarte Shape Tape, kind of, and I think that was their angle. They're trying to go that way. But it looks like a full-on foundation, the size of it. This is a half a fluid ounce, which is half the size of a full foundation, which is a ton of product you're getting here. And you pay a hefty price for it. But it has the doe foot applicator similar to the shape tape and I don't know they have a decent shade range in this and I know they expanded their shade range of their born this way foundation is that what it's called born this way foundation I know that they worked with Jackie Ina and um I honestly truly all right let me tell you I don't support collaborations with Jackie Ina because she decided to get loud mouth with me and I'm not about that life so she can go kick rocks so don't expect me to like promote her collections I am not going to does that mean I'm going to boycott brands that work with her no does that mean I wish her ill will no but the born this way foundation um, concealer I'm gonna try that out moving on now let's move into some palettes that is let's get into some more palettes because we just went through some of them right but I think I knocked out all the other products yes yes I did pick up the Norvina purple smurfle palette this is the Norvina palette I spoke about this in um, that previous haul video um, no buy video I did the swatches in store and I did pick it up again it's a neutral palette you look at it you cover up this purple and maybe this other purple and it's just a neutral palette which is not a bad thing I think it's a cute wearable palette if you're into more pinky tones more purpley tones it will be a good palette for you guys what I found deceiving was that the looks that Norvina did on like with the promotion and everything I feel like the the eyeshadows were more saturated in those looks like they look really intense and really pigmented like punch but they're not really they're like medium tones here they're not really any dark tones even the darkest matte passion is not that dark drama is probably the deepest tone but that's a shimmer but the shimmer shades are really like they're really metallic but they're those eyeshadows that you have to use damp with a sticky base or with a stiff brush to really press it in or use your fingers probably is the best the best scenario because they have that flakier texture that needs something to really smooth them out so mm, I don't I, I don't mind this palette I don't hate it I think it's a good palette if you're just looking for an everyday easy palette to throw on your eyes it's it's not gonna be anything outstanding it's not gonna be anything crazy like you're not gonna get anything really oh my god breathtaking never been done before it will it won't happen with that palette Speaking of, let's talk about the Juvia's Place palettes. So I did pick up two of the palettes from them. Like I said, they're available on Ulta now. So you can pick them up and I think they're going to be in stores soon. So I picked up the new neutral palette from them. They have the Wario, it's called the Wario palette. 
This has nine shades and it's nine neutral shades. Now, now these are really metallic and really beautiful and intense in your face. They're neutral tones though and there are three mattes in here. You have like a bone shade matte, a medium tone like caramelly brown it's like yeah it's like a caramelly brown and then a really deep blackened espresso brown love that and then you have some bronzy tones and some golden tones i think this is a pretty cool palette not cool like cool tone but it's a pretty nice palette if you're just going for simple neutral looks and you want to shimmer on the lid and a little bit of definition in the crease you have a little brow bone highlight you have an inner tear duct highlight it's a great everyday palette again. You can even use it as a pairing palette, but it's a nice neutral palette, and I think Juvia's place was due for another neutral palette, so good for them with that. And then the newest palette that they released when they released in Ulta is the Afrique palette. Beautiful artwork again. This is like the... I love that they do beautiful like packaging, different packaging for their eyeshadows, like it's different color themes. So this one is... Let me hold it this way. Just, just It's upside down, right? But anyway. So this one has a lot of mattes. This is um, 12 eyeshadows. And let's see. Seven of them are mattes, which is amazing. And I've heard great things about these. I have not used them on my eyes. And my swatches don't really look too impressive at all. Like the green, the blue, the they don't look too impressive. But what I've learned from Juvia's Place and their palettes is that their eyeshadows build up really nice on the eyes. The shimmers I've never had a problem with. It's just you have to use a stiffer brush because they have, min do they still use mineral oil in these? Is that what they use still? Where's my box there? Where is the box? So their initial palettes used to use mineral oil, but now it's talc, mica, kaolin, which is a little bit of a slipping agent. You also have dimethicone. So, okay, so they have the thicker, creamier texture. These feel a little bit lighter than the other ones that they have. Even their mattes don't feel as thick and as creamy and as luxurious. I'd have to play with this to see what kind of looks I could amount from this. And I did pick up one of the blushes like I mentioned that I would. So this one is Bella. Is it Bella or is that the name of the blush? Like, I'm so confused. So it's the Afrique blush by Juvia's and this is the shade Bella, I'm assuming. It's a beautiful matte. Um, it's more like a, t I don't know, like a peachy rose shade. Really beautiful. The pigmentation on this is nice and the texture is really smooth as well. So I'm really excited about that blush. I'm, I, I like that they did singles because before they had the blush palettes, which not everybody's going to use all the shades. So it's nice that they did um, little singles now. Now, this is a palette that I picked up in store because I, online I wasn't interested. Like, Violet Voss was never a brand that I really wanted to check out. They're an indie brand that is now available at Sephora. And some of their palettes are available um, in store at Sephora. You, so you can swatch them. So I went in store. And you know they have, like, the separate section where they have, like, feature palettes, feature products. So this is one of them. It's the Violet Voss Rainbow Eyeshadow Palette. And, oh, my God. These are so creamy and so, like, metallic and beautiful and rich. And I love these, like, jewel tones. I love, like, I love a, this is my thing. Like, I love a jewel tone palette. These are really nice. But I feel like there are a couple of shades that I could have done without. Like, this black that's called Eclipse. It's a, like a matte black with a ton of silver shimmer. I could have done without that. Like, you could have missed me with it. And then these two purples look so similar. One's called Violet, one's called Indigo. They look, even from there, so they look alike. It's just, they're so similar, but it's okay. Like, I guess, but not really. You know what I mean? Like, they're not really... To me, they could have put another color in there. But it's nice. Like, they have this green, this teal... It's beautiful yellow gold, the pink, the blue. Like, this is a nice palette. And it's not, like, that highly priced either. And it's really beautiful colors. And they're, like, up my alley. So I was really excited to try that out. So I'm really excited about those. And, and let me mention another indie brand since I'm here. So Give Me Glow. I did order this before, the staple palette. I showed you guys this one before. But I also picked up now the Summer Vibes palette. This guy I had ordered a while back because 
they go in and out of stock. I think they restock every Friday. So if you're interested, check them out. It's a whole thing. But I ordered the Summer Vibes palette. And I wasn't going to get this, but I was like, all right, let me try them out. So these have a ton of mattes in This palette has a ton of mattes in it. So we have eight mattes. There are 12 shades and four of them are shimmers. So eight out of 12 are mattes. And these mattes are so beautiful, creamy, pigmented, like intense. They do have a lot of kick up though, which I'm okay with. Cause like I said, I don't really make a mess of palettes. Like I tap in and I do my thing. Like it's not really a thing for me. And the shimmers are so pretty. These little um, eyeshadows are removable. I wish they had the names on the back of the eyeshadows though, because I don't take things out of palettes because if I'm using them in a look, I'm using them in like a tutorial or a get ready with me, I want to be able to tell you what the shade is. So I wish they had the names on this so I could reorganize it. But beautiful shades, this orange mango margarita, shut your mouth. In Brazilian bikini, this teal, so good. The watermelon shade is like perfect. Oh my god, they're so pretty. Let me show you compared to the staple palette. So you can see, I wish these indie brands would stop making these huge, huge eyeshadow pens though. Like, we don't need that much eyeshadow, especially with these bright colors. Like, who's going to use up watermelon? Really? Really? You can make smaller pens now. But this is more earthy tone, like the staple palette, and this is more fall. This is definitely more summer. So, beautiful. I'm happy I got these. Like, they're really, really gorgeous. And then... I got two more palettes that I was not intended on getting, but I went into Sephora and such and such. Did you guys hear, by the way, that Sephora is redoing their rewards program? <laughs> Ulta got you all sweating and trying to play catch up because Ulta rewards you with dollars off and pe anybody loves money off. So um, the VIB program, the Rouge program has been revamped. You get more points, you get better um, rewards. You also get like, you can get a gift card for a certain amount of points. I think it's 2,500 points, you get a $100 gift card. Don't quote me on that, but it's something like that, right? That's so much better. Thank you, Sephora, for listening and trying to keep up. So, two palettes I picked up. I don't think I'm even really picking up anything crazy from the Sephora sale. Oh, by the way, they kicked that up earlier in the year. So usually it was in November. Now it's in September. August, September, like it starts the 24th of August. Imagine that. I will leave what details I have down below, but imagine that. Well, now I try keep up, keep up. Whew. Plus they have the weekly wow where they have a lot of things going on sale. It's like a whole, it's a whole to do. Anyway, Bobbi Brown has these new palettes, right? And I wasn't even, you know, all you're going to Sephora and like, I wasn't even intending. And then we're gonna take fast and go swatch. I love Bobbi Brown eyeshadows. Let's put that out there first. I love her eyeshadows. I think they're really nice. They're really sophisticated. They're for like the everyday makeup wearer that's not really into bold, intense, and crazy. Like you just wear a simple look and you keep it moving. This is the Night Drama palette. These are beautiful. Now there is a tricky shade in here. This one here with the, the Glitter, what is that called? Oyster, it's a sparkle eyeshadow. I don't like that, but if you use it damp, it's so pretty. If you use it damp, you have to use it damp though. These have, this palette has more smoky tones in here. And I don't know, like I really love just how easy these are. And the shimmers are the type of shimmers that I consider wearable shimmers. They're not high shine, they're not metallic, they're not like in your face. They remind me of the Tom Ford shimmers. They're just nice and easy to wear and I really, really like that palette. So I picked that up and then I picked up the new drama. They're very Stila rep reminiscent, right? Eyes are the window, whatever. Also what um, Milani's doing now, but 12 eyeshadows. They have this nude theme. This one has, um, I think, two of those shimmer crystal shades. What are they called? <laughs> I keep asking what are they called. Sparkle eyeshadows. So no, three of them are sparkles, which are not my favorite texture, but use them damp. They're like a sparkly topper. They're really pretty though, but they have some really beautiful mattes. This matte, dark brown, is so beautiful. This is the dark brown that I go for. That's almost black, but it's not. I love that. So this is a nice everyday palette as well. So definitely like this. I... I wasn't even looking that way like you know you weren't even thinking about it and no one talks about it so they people aren't sent PR so you hear nothing I definitely wanted to check that out so I'll wrap up now with oh another indie brand 
and then we'll wrap up with the Smashbox palette. So I did end up getting the Colored Rain pat the eyeshadows, the pressed pigments, the rainbow, what, what are they called even? Do they even say what they're called? Vivid Pigments. So these are cruel, cruelty free, vegan, 12 months. They're 1.8 grams made in the USA. The palette that you can purchase separately comes, you can buy it with the, with the bundle. It will hold all the eyeshadows. Beautiful theme, it has a mirror, remove the plastic, you know, whatever. But here are the shades. They're pretty, right? They're really pretty. Um, They're drier than I was expecting and anticipating. They have a drier texture to them. Here's the thing, Colored Rain is realizing that their pricing is was trash and that no one is really trying to pay those prices. So their palette that they released, what was it? Not the Queen of Hearts palette, the Sister palette. I forget the name of it, but that went on sale. Colored Rain does not go on sale that often and now they're on sale every five minutes. And those little six pan eyeshadow palettes, those palettes are now reduced in cost. So originally they were $36 and now they're 27. Like the sale price was $27, right? Now they're actually now officially priced as $27. Plus you can get the affiliate discount of 10%. So they're realizing that their pricing ain't popping and ain't nobody trying to buy those. So they did price this bundle really well. Anyway, these eyeshadows a little bit drier than I was thinking. They aren't very, like you touch them, you're like, you're not really silky or creamy. All right, that's fine. I understand when they're pigments, they're harder to keep creamy because to get the pigmentation, you're just gonna have to deal with the coarseness of the pigments, but they're not that finely milled. That's cool, that's all right. Are you gonna perform? I have not tried these out yet. I'm a little skeptical, and a couple of the shades were unnecessary to be repeated, like this full purple row. I did not need all of that. You could have done two purples and been done. This red shade, though, I'm really excited to try out because it's like a deep blood red. I can't wait. This blue is nice, but I think they have... You know what blue they have? What the hell is that blue called? I There are too many names, too many eyeshadows, but they have a really beautiful blue. But I feel like they didn't need all of this. This green I'm interested in, the dark green, the grass green is nice. The yellow is not really impressive at all. This pink though, this bright ass pink is really sexy. And then, you know, we'll see. I, 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 mm, I gotta try this out, but I've heard nothing but good things. But then again, there's some brands that people don't really speak negatively about because they have like a good reputation. So people are like, more forgiving like they won't say negative things about them but they're a little bit dry so I don't know like how I'm vibing with them yet but we'll see now back to Smashbox which is what we'll wrap up with because these are the final things so we have the sunlit yellow cover shot palette this is online only currently at Sephora I was excited I was like this looks like the lemonade palette this is what it needs to be and it's cute it's cute I don't like how this swatches I don't know how it applies but ooh, um I don't I don't know like three of the shades are already the three shimmer shades I'm like not excited about they feel a little thin they're not beautiful colors I'm a little worded out about. And like the yellow shade is alright. And then the dark, it's a dark gray. I thought it was a dark green. It's like a dark gray with a hint of forest green to it. And then the dark teal. I don't know. They don't swatch really well at all. Like I'm, I was looking at this palette like what kind of... No, mm -mm. it wasn't like the most impressive. And then I picked up, let's see, let me move through as, you know... From least impressive to other, you know, to the best. Anyway, the Prism palette. Told you guys I was gonna get this. This has two different finished, um, a new two shades that are new finishes in these, and they say they have it like on the mirror. It says apply them with your finger, not a brush, for maximum pigment payoff. All right, I'll accept. So I swatch them with my fingers. They don't really look great with the finger swatches, but like um, a couple of the shades are nice. Like I do like the matte. There's one matte in here. I do like it. The shimmer shades are pretty. They're more of that um, pinky mauvey tone. They're okay, but I don't like the texture. I mean, it's a new texture, so maybe I just need to work with them a little bit more, but I'm going to try those. They're like a flaky texture. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that this is 
something that I'm like really excited about. Like, I'm like, all right, you're cute, but I don't know yet. Then I have the glitter palette. This is straight up glitter. Like, it looks so gorgeous. Um, all right, so this is pressed glitter. It has a very sheer eyeshadow base, like a thin eyeshadow base, like a colored base. And then it has like tons of glitter in it. You need a glitter glue. Don't even play yourself, you need a glitter glue. You need something really sticky for this. Preferably use these damn, preferably use them with your finger. Ooh, these are tricky. I have to practice with these and see how these work. Because I don't, I, they feel so gritty. It's like serious glitter. And I mean, I should know that and expect that because it says heavy glitter. Like, what were you expecting, Tina? Like, seriously. I don't know what I was expecting. So we're gonna test those out. But the other two are nice. The other two I was happy with. So the first one is the Minimalist Eyeshadow Palette. And you would be like, where are you going? But it's such a simple, easy palette. There are five mattes and then three shimmers. It's a very simple palette, minimalist indeed. But the shades are just so beautiful, so easy to wear. I think they coordinate well. I think if you were looking for like a cooler tone, like gray undertone, neutral, I wouldn't say cool tone, more neutral tone palette, just for every day, this is a beautiful one. The shades are more medium tone, like there's nothing too light. So if you're really light skin, you might need something for a highlight. But other than that, I think this is a beautiful palette. I love the smoky deep tone. I love this palette. I think it's a really nice one for every day. And I'm like into those everyday kind of palettes. I can rock with them. And then last up is their Major Metals Eye Palette. This one also has two of the new texture eyeshadows. But these are different. And the two shades look very similar. They're like a coppery gold. Those are a little bit smoother. They're not as flaky, but definitely still use like a sticky base with them. Use the, your finger, use them damp, use a stiff brush. You know the drill. But the shimmer shades, there are no mattes in this. The shimmer shades in this are so, like, so silky, intense, creamy, buttery, and smooth. Oh my god! I really like this palette. So I'm happy with two of the palettes. Three of them are like uh, iffy about, but I'm gonna try those out. Um, we'll see how it goes. I want to start doing like quicker review videos or like review roundup videos. That I can maybe do five reviews in one and do like a review roundup like that. I'm gonna put these to the test, come back, give you some feedback and stuff. If there's anything that you need, I don't know, like I want to do the reviews that I want to do. <laughs> to be honest, I know I'm like, what do you guys want to see? But sometimes it's like I go with what my vibe goes with and that will make me more excited to do videos instead of just doing them just to do them. So, those are the things that I picked up. I don't, I don't foresee myself picking up too many things coming up, especially even with the VIB sale. I don't think, like last year I didn't pick up a lot. This year I didn't even pick up a lot in the springtime. And I don't think this time around I'm going to even get too many things. I will get some skincare things, but that's about it for me. So... Yeah, I will leave a full list of all the products mentioned and swatched hair in this video down below in the description box along with links on where you can pick those up. Those links happen to be affiliate links that I generate through Ulta or Sephora. Otherwise, those links are just directly to like the indie brand websites. You can check those out as well. If you shop through my links, that means I will get a small sales commission on your purchase. If you're not comfortable with that, shop how you normally shop. But if you do shop through my links, thank you so much for the support because it does help me to put back into the channel. And until my next video, oh, wait, wait, wait. I will leave links to my Instagram and Twitter page where you should follow me along. And if you aren't already subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, hit the like button, the thumbs up button, you know, show your support. And at the end of this video, there are two videos that may pique your interest in case you're interested in checking out more content from me. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys.